Welcome to Kuala Lumpur. In this video, I will show you all you have to do and see in Kuala Lumpur on a budget. To get to Kuala Lumpur, I took a bus from Tanarata in the Cameron Highlands. Nobody warned me about how bad this trip would get. We spent over an hour on the windiest road that was even worse than the infamous road between Chiang Mai and Pai in northern Thailand. Or maybe it just felt worse because we were in a proper bus instead of a minivan. Luckily, I had a front seat and I could see where we were going. But yeah, let this be your warning. I was so happy to be in a big city again because they always feel like anything can happen. I arrived at KL Central Station and from there I got on the monorail. I had to change lanes at the next station to get on a second one and it dropped me off in front of my hostel. I have been staying in the hostel called Sunshine Beds and it is right on the biggest um, crossroads of the city. Honestly, the location is impeccable. You get out of the metro station and there it is. And the owner, Patrick, Patrick, love you. Um, and also just all the other staff, Jasmine and uh, the volunteers as well. There's such a great vibe. There is a rooftop that you can uh, chill at and there is breakfast included every single day. It's just toast, but they do have chocolate spread and peanut butter. I mean, what more could you want? Personally, I think this is the best area to stay in and it is Bukit Bintang. It is the most modern part of the city and lots of restaurants, lots of stores, so much to see and do and it is also a great place from where you can visit the other areas. Bukit Bintang is bustling day and night. I was in awe of all the shops but I wasn't successful in finding a sugar daddy to provide me with all of this. I was then blown away by this Japanese store called Don Don Donkey. They were serving Wagyu beef and they sell everything you can think of from ready to eat sushi and sashimi to deep fried and warm food options and noodles in all possible flavors. I'm a snack person so I was obviously overwhelmed by all the snacks. Underneath the shopping center is Lot 10, a huge food court that mainly offers Chinese food. I thought it was strange that you could also shop international ingredients and snacks here. One of the two main shopping centers is Pavilion, not only for luxury brands but also a huge amount of high street brands and lots and lots of food. When I think of my friends who told me that spending three days in Kuala Lumpur is enough, I know that what they really meant is that they probably ran out of money. Because, to be honest, I could spend ages in Kuala Lumpur. However, if you want to save money, like me, there are plenty of ways to do so. At night, the streets fill with street food vendors, which is always the cheapest food. I loved that the Jalan Alor food street was just around the corner of our hostel. When I was eating here, our Malay neighbors even gave us some of their chicken. There is a lot of great Thai food like this perfect mango and sticky rice. I love a fried banana and as if I needed any more desserts, I had to try this giant ice cream with my Italian friend. Safe to say I made an absolute mess. You can also find hundreds of Arab food restaurants or you can get a small lunch at 7-Eleven. A cheap sandwich, noodles or pasta. Everyone told me to try the fried chicken, so obviously I had to. But I still preferred KFC in Thailand. And then of course, just outside of the city are the most famous temples of Malaysia, the Batu Caves. And we had the most incredible visit. 
My friends from the hostel and I shared a grab card to the Batu Caves. Somehow, we didn't have to pay entry, which I thought we had to. Since there are Hindu temples in and around the Batu Caves, you can find lots of Indian snacks here. Good morning guys, we have made it to the Batu Caves. We took a grab from the hostel in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, there's five of us, I'm here with two Italian guys and two girls from the hostel. Um, and we've already spotted the monkeys. I, I don't like monkeys much. I will try to stay away from them and let's see what this temple is all about. A lot of people have told me it is quite disappointing or not that great, but I'm excited to be here. It was a Sunday and we accidentally crashed an Indian wedding. It's always been a dream of mine to attend and an Indian wedding. There seem to be entire tents set up for the people to have an absolute feast here after all the ceremonies. I love witnessing local traditions and although it was busier on a Sunday, I love being able to see all of this. This here even had a newborn baby inside of it. Little did we know we would run into a Hindu wedding at the Batu Caves. It was really nice. Um, the women were all dressed in beautiful sarees and I felt like I did fit in. And now we are walking up the steps to the caves. don't get why people say that it is underwhelming because this whole thing inside of the cave is so impressive I get it if it was just the stairs outside then maybe it's not as like wow but this is incredible I honestly don't know how people don't show the other side of the Batu case because in my opinion it was amazing now we are making our way back down and there are a lot more monkeys going down now a lot with babies as well <laughs> But as long as you don't have food in your bag, you should be okay. When we got down, my t-shirt was soaked. And then we got in another grab car to get back for lunchtime. Another budget option that is a true hidden gem is this 33 food court. Here you can find different buffet style vendors and they charge you for what you put on your plate. I am now at the KLCC mall and this is the mall that is underneath the Petronas, the Twin Towers. And I was here um, just now with a girl from the hostel, but now I'm alone. And we went into Bath and Body Works, which is a shop that I had never been into before anywhere. Uh, and for Black Friday, there are uh, promotions going on everywhere. And right now they are buy three, get three free. I am so tempted to get an extra piece of luggage because it's only like I'm not traveling around that much anymore for the rest of my time. And yeah, it's so tempting to buy too much stuff here in Kuala Lumpur. Behind me is a bakery called Lavender and the stuff they have in there is insane. It's on the level of uh, European patisserie and I think Kuala Lumpur could be a city that I could live, maybe, but I would gain a lot of weight. Um, I was just in Marks and Spencer's as well and they have my ideal Christmas ornaments. Um, they are about the Seven World Wonders but if I'm correct, there is a mistake in there. It should not be a pyramid, it should be the Colosseum in Rome. But yeah, anyway, so much going on here, I do not know where to look first. During 
the rainy season, this covered walkway from the Petronas Towers to Bukit Bintang is great. In the evening, I came back with my friends to visit the Sky Bar. We made a reservation so we would have a good seat at the windows and you can even swim here if you'd like. We had a drink and watched how all the lights turned on as it got dark and we could watch the 7pm fountain show from up here. On my last morning, I took the monorail to the Chowkid area. This is a super affordable way to get around. This is the swimming pool at the Regalia Suites. Um, I booked a night at the penthouse on 34 hostel. Uh, I didn't stay there, I spent the night at the other hostel instead, but I'll show you the room anyways. Um, and the swimming pool is free to use when you stay there, but you do have to register at the reception and you get a time slot of an hour. The penthouse on 34 Hustle is in the same building as the Regalia Suites, just another tower. They have a kitchen you can use, the bedroom definitely looked better than the one I stayed at, better beds with curtains and even a view over the skyline from the room. I have tested and approved the bathroom, it was an amazing shower, but most of all the rooftop terrace of the hostel is just to die for. This is definitely the hostel with the best city skyline view in the entire world. perfect end to my time in Malaysia and especially in Kuala Lumpur um, I've enjoyed Kuala Lumpur the most so far and yeah this was the perfect view and the perfect uh, end to a beautiful week here in Malaysia the neighborhood that I was with the infinity pool that looks out over the skyline that was in the north and it is called Chowkit uh, now it is a bit um, further away from the other sightseeing things so although it is a beautiful location it is not very convenient um, then between that part of the city and Little India or Kuala Lumpur Central Station is the Botanical Garden and that is where I am right now botanical garden you can visit the kale bird park and the islamic art museum unfortunately i didn't have time to visit the last one next to it is the national mosque and from here i walked to the old city center passing by some remarkably beautiful buildings it is free to walk around and there is so much to see like the old train station the textile museum which is located on the merdeka square here you can find the flagpole where the malaysian flag was first pulled up the next interesting stop along my walk was the River of Life, where two rivers meet. I loved the murals here. I then made my way to the central market, also called Pasar Seni. It is the place to be to get your Malaysian souvenirs. It is just as much a fascinating melting pot of cultures as the country itself. Music 
there is also a food court which offers different cuisines for very little money. do now that I am in Old Town is go cafe hopping. I have three on my list. One is ETC Cafe which looks great for maybe a burger, some fries, then the most Instagrammable cafe of Kuala Lumpur Mary Chain and Yu Yu looks great for a dessert. So let's go and have a look. At ETC I had a lamb burger which was easily one of the best burgers I've had in the world. I recommended it to experts and they agreed. Next up was Mary Jane which I went to more for the interior rather than the food. The waitress told me to have a look in the toilets as well and I get why. Last but not least, I stopped at Yu Yu for my waffle fix. This one even had Belgian chocolate and cookies on top. My heart! In the meantime, the heavy daily rain was causing a flood outside and it was so bad that it even got the locals out on the street in disbelief. In the old city center is also Chinatown. This is especially a nice place to be in the evening. For anything made in China, this is the place to be. My friend Marie and I couldn't resist a cheap fruit juice and browsed the street food. Chow Ki clay pot chicken rice seemed the most popular. Across from it we entered the REXKL Cultural Center. A mix of a food court, a bookstore and we even ran into a cheap techno party that without knowing it everyone was coming to. Techno is not really my thing but I really liked the location. The second biggest building in the world, Merdaka 118 is nearby as well. That is it for this video guys, I hope you liked it. If you did make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't want to miss any of the next videos also from Thailand. Anyway, I hope to see you in those next videos. Bye!